Today I wanted to talk about three ways that you can use to beat 99% of other algo traders. Algo trading is hard. It's not an easy career to be good in and it's very easy to fail. So I know I'm sounding really negative, but it also is possible to be successful. Obviously, if you look at myself in my recent videos and I want to show you how to have the most chance of beating other algo traders because there is competition out there. There is enough room for everyone to win, but you got to put in the work and I'm going to be showing you how. So the first way that you can beat other algo traders, and this is honestly, arguably the most easiest way is sticking through the drawdowns. Okay. So first of all, what is a drawdown if you're a beginner here? So a drawdown is essentially from peak to valley, uh, how much money you're down. All right. As you're trading, either you're making new equity highs. So you're making say new peaks in your equity curve, or you're kind of flat where you're not making new peaks, but you're not making new lows. And then the third part is you're basically making a new low where you're, you're, you're entering a bigger drawdown and maybe you're bouncing back a little bit, but you're kind of, you know, in between making new equity highs and going flat. So sticking through the drawdowns is how you can beat other algo traders because so many algo traders give up. All right. They get into a five, 10% drawdown. They get impatient and they stop trading. And if they kept trading, they may have bounced back. There's no guarantee of bouncing back, of course. But from my community, from what I've seen doing this for so long, you usually bounce back. If you're building good systems, you do bounce back and you get out of that drawdown. Either you make new equity peaks or you get very close to your equity peak. So if you actually stick in the game and stick through your drawdowns, you will be other algo traders because they'll give up, right? They'll stop trading their strategies, thus allowing your strategies to, to do better. It's less crowded. So sticking through the drawdowns. The tough part about drawdowns is, you know, you backtest when you build and backtest your systems, you know, your backtest may tell you that, oh, your average recovery is say 10 days, right? So on average, when you get into a drawdown, it takes 10 days to recover fully, which means that you get to a new equity peak, right? And in reality, that never happens, right? You start trading live. It's always going to be worse than the backtest. All right. You tear, you know, from my experience, I'll tell you guys, honestly, and truthfully, you build 10 trading systems, right? And say they're all amazing, right? They pass all your tests. You did robustness testing, cross validation, multi-market tests, all that. They all look good. They all back test well, risk adjusted. They're great. Honestly, of the 10, maybe three will match or beat the back test, right? Another three will not make any money, but not lose any money. They'll just be flat. And then the remaining four will suck. All right. They'll, they'll lose money. Okay. And that's just the reality, how it is, you know, you build trading systems, not all of them are great, right? No matter how well you back test them. So when you do back testing and you see your drawdowns, just expect reality to be worse. Okay. Your 10 days could easily turn into 12, 15, 20 days of getting out of a drawdown anyways. So in conclusion, stick through the drawdowns and just stick through them. And that, that will give you an edge over other algo traders. Cause they're going to give up and you're going to keep trading and ideally bounce back. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, the second way to beat other algo traders is to test your systems in a simulation or paper account. All right. So many algo traders want to rush and develop their systems and start trading live immediately, which can be good because I do recommend all algo traders trade live as soon as possible, but you don't have to trade with live capital. You can trade in a simulation environment, trading with a SIM account. All right. Any system you develop, you should be running in a SIM account for at least a month, ideally, um, and see if it makes money in that current SIM environment before going live. That's going to save you so much money. It saved me a ton of money and do not rush to launch your systems with a lot of, with, with real life capital. Right now, of course, if you say have, you know, multiple six or seven figures to trade with and you're launching with your systems live immediately with a little capital, like very small, then, you know, that's probably okay. But for most of you out here that, you know, five or $10,000 to trade with at risk capital, run your systems in SIM uh, for or at least a month. I would say as of now, ideally a quarter 
And once it makes money in that environment, in that sim environment for that period of time, then start trading it live. Do not rush from back testing, developing a system to start trading live. It will cost you money. So step number two and how to get ahead of most algo traders is run it in a simulation environment and have it make money before trading it live. All right, so that's number two. The last step to get ahead of algo traders is to trade a static contract size. All right, and this is a controversial topic. Many people have other ways of trading position sizing. Personally, I have not found success in, you know, having a complex position sizing system. All right, when you build your trading systems, Obviously, you need to know how much capital is required to trade that portfolio of systems. Usually from a margin perspective, you take the, the total margin needed to trade those systems plus, you know, some type of drawdown calculation. But from my perspective, from my experience, you know, trade all your systems equally in terms of sizing. Don't try and add Martingale to one system or add contracts in one system and decrease contracts in another system it just never works out i've tried every way around it and maybe i'm stupid maybe i suck but i've never found success i found success trading static contracts for each of my systems right so so you have 10 systems and you have enough capital to trade three contracts each when i say contracts obviously you guys know that i trade futures contracts trade three contracts each for all your systems don't try and trade four of one three of the other seven of the other it just won't work out all right you're, you're essentially making a higher bet on an individual system. And when it comes to randomness at play with live markets, it, it never works out. So trade a stock static contract size. And if you're diversified enough, which you should be, maybe this is bonus this is obviously diversification. You be tr should be trading all types of markets. If you're diversified enough, this should result in success. All right. If you got 10, 10 live systems, and you're trading everything from stock indices to metals, energies, you know, agriculture's interest rate products, et cetera, et cetera. That diversification plus the static contract size will allow you to have the highest chance of success. All right. So those are the three ways to beat other algo traders. Number one, stick through the drawdowns. Number two, running your systems in a simulation environment before trading live. And it has to make money in that sim before going live. And lastly, number three, don't have a complex position sizing system. All right, trade everything statically. And obviously, bonus, have diversification in your trading systems. Don't have 10 trading systems on NASDAQ. I used to do that, and it doesn't work. Well, long story short, it does work, but it, you become so correlated that during rough times, your drawdowns are going to be much longer than you want it to be. And it's very, very, very tough to handle. So have diversification in your portfolio of automated trading systems. If you want to learn more about automated trading systems, trading bots, and how to build a good trading system, see the links in the description below. I did change up the type of video today with this kind of voiceover and this uh, of me just working. So let me know in the comments below if you like this type of video, kind of my voiceovers, and if you find value in them, if you, if you learn better than you know, say a live action video, if you will, I would be very keen to know. Have a good week, guys. Happy trading. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.